welcome to episode 92 of the Postal Hub podcast. I'm Ian Kerr. What's the state of African e-commerce? Kathy Moira Robertson from Logistics Trends and Insights joins me to talk about her research into the sector. And we also tee off on two-person delivery of heavy goods. Before we get to Kathy, a quick reminder to sign up for the Postal Hub e-newsletter. It's a weekly email update with the latest podcast and other news. Go to thepostalhub.com and sign up. And if you are listening to this podcast through iTunes, remember two things. First of all, you can subscribe via iTunes. You get each and every episode downloaded to the device of your choosing. And you can also give the podcast a rating and a review. It'd be great to get a few more ratings and reviews up there on iTunes, please. So please take a moment just to give us a quick review and rating there. Right, let's get into this. African e-commerce with Kathy morrow Robertson. Joining me now on the Postal Hub podcast is Kathy morrow Robertson from Logistics Trends and Insights. Kathy, welcome. We're going to be talking about African e-commerce. You've written a bit of a white paper about e-commerce in Africa. Let's just kick it off by saying, well, how big is online the online retail scene in Africa? Uh, well, first of all, thank you for having me. It's been quite a while since we last chatted. Currently, Africa's e-commerce market is pretty small. It's only about 2% of, um, of total retail. However, the potential is so great for this region. I think within the next few years, five to 10 years probably, you're going to see it really take off. But there's a lot of risk involved. But like I said, there's still a huge potential with an expanding middle class and the GDP is growing. And so what kind of expansion are you expecting to see there? Or what, what, what are people saying? That's, where, where is it going to grow? I think as the population increases, and, and, and right now Africa represents 15% of the world's population. Okay, so it's it's a pretty big number there, but it's going to continue to grow. This middle class is full of younger people, and these younger people have been brought up in the commerce age. So they're all walking around with smartphones. Smart Mobile commerce is growing the fastest here. And while... The region only represents about 3% of the world's GDP. Again, it is going to expand, and it's expanding now because thanks to this middle class, and I know I keep talking about this middle class, they're demanding more goods, more apparel, automobiles, and so on. And as a result, you're seeing these manufacturers of such products moving into the region to address not only the domestic demand, but also from a regional demand into Europe, into Southeast Asia as well. So from a logistics standpoint, you're seeing different trade lane patterns emerging as well. So that was going to be my next question. Is what's, what's the logistics uh, behind Africa's e-commerce looking like? Oh, my gosh. It's, it's improving. But with that being said, there's <laughs> a lot of improvement is needed. Uh, the infrastructure has been lacking, and that's been one of the biggest drawbacks. Roads, for example. There's still a lot of dirt roads that lead off into nowhere. So trying to find somebody's front steps to deliver that package may be a little difficult. Addresses. Addresses for a lot of these areas within Africa is lacking. And you see startups such as What Three Words coming into play. Also Dubai's Fetcher is moving into the area to address these lack of addresses. So they're coming up with creative ways to find the customer. But a lot of the growth is in the cities themselves, of course. I mean, that's very similar to like here in the U.S., in Europe, Asia, and so on. Airports, they're beginning to modernize more. The ports are as well. But again, the the all important road network is still lacking in so many areas. We had a great chat with Charles Brewer from DHL e commerce or a few months ago on the podcast now. And Charles has a great background in 
transport and logistics in Africa and a really great understanding of it. So uh, if you're listening to this now, go back and listen to the episode with Charles Brewer, some really interesting insights into uh, the state of logistics in Africa, particularly with regard to e-commerce. And he tells a very interesting story about a boat, uh, which I won't, I won't ruin the punchline, Kathy. But obviously DHL, very active there. Are there any you know domestic or um, pan-continental carriers apart from DHL who are who are um, who are helping out with the logistics side of things. DHL is probably one of the leaders in the region. They've been in Africa for quite a number of years, but you also have other European logistics providers such as Kuninago and um, Panalpina has been in the space for a while as well. FedEx has made a domestic acquisition within Africa a few years ago, which has given them a road network, a domestic road network for their express division. I think that's an interesting development though, Kathy, is is buying a local player instead of trying to expand your existing business into the country. Is that how they've approached it? I think so, yeah. I haven't heard anything else about how it's going or what have you, but it was in 2014 that FedEx Express, they acquired Super Swift, which has locations in South Africa and six other countries. So I, I think it's I think it was a really smart move. And it has potential for the e commerce market if FedEx decides to go that route. UPS has presence in South Africa and they've recently, I think within the past year or so, have brought Morocco into the folds, and that is a UPS subsidiary now. When we talk about the Middle East and North Africa, we often talk about Aramex. Or how about Aramex in the rest of uh, Africa? I think Aramex is a fascinating company. They've been expanding into Africa. They've made some acquisitions. They've made some uh, strategic partnerships, with particularly within South Africa. And because South Africa is one of the larger growth opportunities for e-commerce, retail, and so on. It's one of the much more mature markets of Africa. They've also been at work installing lockers as well throughout the region. What about warehousing? Have you had any uh, insights into what's happening with warehousing and that side of things in Africa? Oh, warehousing is kind of interesting. It seems like quite a few startups in the region, and, and it's very similar to what's happened elsewhere around the world. But a lot of these startups are taking or handling logistics themselves, doing that whole last mile delivery. And there's one in Nigeria, for example, called Conga. And they have been recently in the news after we published this. But anyway, Conga has introduced a network of warehouses throughout Nigeria to make that last mile delivery faster, to run smoother. But since we published this white paper, Conga has also let go of quite a few of their employees. So it also tells you, that tells you the volatility of the marketplace. The white paper is called Africa's e-commerce potential is awesome, but <laughs> and you can download it from the Logistics Trends and Insight website, which is logisticsti.com. But Kathy, before we wind it up, I just want to quickly mention one of our favorite topics recently, which has been two-person delivery, delivery of heavy goods, the last mile for heavy goods. We've both had some interesting experiences in the last mm. few months when it comes to home delivery. And look, I'll tell you what, Kathy, I'm going to share with the listeners just really quickly what happened with me. I ordered some furniture from a very well-known Swedish furniture manufacturer, and it was a disaster. And instead of being delivered within, I think it was seven to 10 days, it was delivered within 36 days. <laughs> and, and it wasn't even delivered to the door at the end of all of that. Kathy, you've had a, a recent, how should we put this, um, less than ideal <laughs> delivery experience. <laughs> Uh, well, when it comes to <laughs> delivering some some larger household goods, you want to quickly share with the, with the listeners what happened with you without without shaming people unnecessarily. No, there's no need to shame. I think it's been a learning experience for everyone involved. Oh, that's uh, very no. generous. <laughs> <laughs> we we purchased a stove from a well known home improvement store and. 
we've acquired quite a few pieces of appliances from this particular store. No problem. The delivery was scheduled for um, a week out from the purchase. And yeah, let's just say it, we never got it. And, <laughs> and we found out that the retailer had rescheduled our delivery to a later date, but never told us. And um, so we eventually decided to cancel the order and go with another home improvement store. <laughs> so there you go. Well, I think what we, why I wanted to introduce this was not just so that Kathy and I can sound off about bad <laughs> delivery experiences. Well, if you want to check Kathy's Twitter feed, it is quite entertaining. CM Robinson 06 over there on Twitter. <laughs> You'll see that she doesn't spare anybody's blushes, so to speak, over there. She, their names are named. However, it's illustrative of how last mile delivery for heavy goods, two-person delivery, is very different to the what we would consider regular last mile delivery. You know, one person in a, in a van or a truck throwing parcels over your fence or putting them on your porch or whatever it might be, as opposed to also some of these companies that seem to be venturing into last mile delivery of heavy goods don't seem to have the the personal touch kathy is that the right way of putting it the right kind of customer customer service expectations yeah expectations when it comes to delivery of these sort of things it's uh, the days of just saying to people you know what your fridge will be delivered sometime between 8 a.m and 4 p.m those days are over they're Mm -hmm. over nobody's going to accept that anymore our expectations have been changed as consumers. And so a delivery company offering that kind of delivery window is just going to lose business, surely. Now, this is me editorialising here, but retailers also have to have the right sort of data connections with the delivery company. And this is one of my complaints from my delivery experience with this well-known Swedish furniture manufacturer, Kathy, was that the information I was getting from the anonymous Swedish furniture manufacturer (laughs) was different to the information i was getting from the delivery company and i've named the delivery company over on my blog so if you want to go over onto my blog at thepostalhub.com you'll see that i've named the delivery company there and they do not come out of this smelling of roses in fact their performance was pathetic but it just illustrates again kathy this is a different space so you know what i'm going to throw it out there if you're a delivery company that specializes in delivery of these sorts of home appliances two-person delivery delivery of uglies as we used to call them do they still call it uglies kathy i don't know i've never heard that well we used to call them uglies (laughs) um then uh you know heavy items items that don't go through the post you know, if you're over, say, 30 kilos or d- uh, more than point a quarter of a cubic metre or whatever it might be, whatever the measurements are, get in touch. I'd love to have you on the show. I'd love to talk about this because I think it's an interesting area. We know that Amazon's going to be getting into it more and more. We read about other manufacturers and retailers in furniture and household goods who are looking at home delivery. I think it's a very interesting space. I'd like to hear from these delivery companies who are doing it. I'd love to get you on the show so we can talk about it. And if uh, the- Now, if I may, I'm going to interrupt you because I'm so good at doing A reversal. That. Yeah, go on. <laughs> okay. Well, yeah, this... Large item, last mile delivery is extremely important. It's growing in double digits, and it's going to keep growing as more and more customers, consumers become more accustomed to ordering this type of item online. And your customer service to this, like Ann mentioned, last mile delivery to my front door, for example, is much more important. Oh, well, much more, not much more important, but it's different versus delivering to a warehouse. Or, or for oh, such yeah. as that. Communications is so important. And I must say that the tweets that I shared on my Twitter page were effective. And I heard back from the delivery company. And they've been phenomenal, explaining in great detail over what happened. The problem is that the retailer hasn't come forward to explain their side. And and I really think it was more of a tech disconnect or, or something there. It was just... Yeah, you know, underscoring the importance of communications. Just between, exactly, yeah. exactly. You know, a simple phone call oh, versus a recording. Precisely. Because, yeah, if you want to get me riled up, just leave a recording. And, if you um, want to get me riled up, tell me how drone delivery is great. <laughs> but they are great. Oh, stop it, stop it, stop it, stop it. <laughs> 
but we know that there are companies that do it really well. Um, I had more furniture delivered from a different company, and they, everything we just said that these other companies did wrong, this other company did right. They were sending me text messages to say what day, confirming the day of delivery, because they had a delivery promise, and they confirmed that their delivery promise was good. They were ringing me up on the day, texting me to say, look, this is the delivery window. Please make sure you're home. If you can't be home, ring us on this number. They're really, really, really pushing the right message there, and they delivered when they said they would deliver delivered and assembled, I might add, which is good for someone like me who's not much of a home handyman. So uh, there, it can be done really well, and I'd love to hear from those companies who are doing it really well as well. Just drop us a line. Drop me a line. Ian at thepostalhub.com is my email address. Or if you're feeling brave, you can tweet Kathy at <laughs> CM Robinson. Uh, she'll be gentle, she says. CM Robinson 6 over there on Twitter. All right, Kathy, we might... We might wrap it up here. We'll just mention the e-commerce white paper again. It's going to be downloaded from logisticstrendsandinsights.com. It's called, I said the title before. I've closed the document here, Kathy. Hang on a second. It's called Africa's (laughs) e-commerce potential is awesome, but, which sounds like the kind of thing that someone from Queensland would say. There's a joke that only Australians will get. Kathy Mo Robertson from Logistics Trends and Insight, thanks for joining us on the Postal Hub podcast today. Thank you. This is the last episode of the Postal Hub podcast before Christmas. So for those of you who celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. And I hope you've managed to survive the pre-Christmas rush on parcels and that it's been a great season for you. Uh, There will be one more podcast before the end of the year, just a little one between Christmas and New Year for us all to look forward to. Next year on the podcast, we're going to be having a great discussion on autonomous delivery vehicles and the postal sector. I've already written a couple of blog posts on that. Check them out at thepostalhub.com. Now, as I say every week, if you're on LinkedIn and you want to connect with me, do so. Just send me a message to say who you are when you send that invitation to connect and I'll almost certainly say yes to your invitation to connect and if you want to contact me about anything at all whether it's to suggest a future topic for the podcast or if you want to say how great or how terrible the podcast is drop me a line directly via email ian at thepostalhub.com is my email address i'm ian kerr thanks for listening in and i look forward to your company next time on the postal hub podcast